Welcome to Metalacto. Today we are going to discuss aortic pressure curve. So let's start. First of all, we will compare the ventricle pressure curve with the aortic pressure curve. So before we start, you should know or you should revise that the cardiac cycle consists of two phases, systole and diastole. Not, we should say that the cardiac cycle is basically consists of four phases. So if you see here, first is the isovolemic contraction, then you will see the systole. Then after isovolemic relaxation and last is the diastole. And that process will continue again and again. So you should keep remember, you there are basically four phases, not two phases, systole and diastole. Okay. Now, if we discuss, first of all, we will discuss the uh, ventri, ventricular pressure curve. And after that, we will compare this ventricular pressure curve with the aortic pressure curve. So, you can easily understand. So, first of all, we start from the isovolemic contraction. We will discuss basically here, we, as you know that two atria and two ventricles. So we will discuss here basically the left ventricle. Okay. So if you see here, at the isovolemic contraction, in which the volume will remain the same, but contraction starts here in the left ventricle. Okay. If you see like on the y-axis, you will see the pressure in the millimeter uh, mercury. So if you see here, like in the isovolemic contraction, you will see the pressure starts increasing. So if you see here, this is the isovolemic contraction in the left ventricle in which you will see the pressure will become 80 millimeter mercury. Okay. Now, after that, you will see the next phase is the systole in which actual contraction happens. So, when the left ventricle contract means in systolic ventricular systole, then you will see the pressure starts increasing. Further increase in the pressure. Okay. Now, this is the systolic phase. And in that situation, you will see the, as we know, that when the systole happens in the ventricle, you will see the aortic valve. So here are basically the aortic valve and here is basically the mitral valve. Okay. Now, when the systole happens in the ventricle, the aortic valve open and the blood flow into the aorta. This is the case. Okay. Now, in that situation, here is the point at which the aortic valve will open. Okay. And after that, you will see the pressure in the ventricle start decreasing because the blood has been goes into the aorta. So, in that situation, you will see the pressure in the left ventricle starts decreasing. Okay. After that, before the diastole, because this is the systole, before the diastole, there is an other state and that is the isovolemic relaxation in which the volume will remain the same, but the pressure will decrease. So in that situation, you will see in the isovolemic relaxation, the pressure of the left ventricle decrease. Okay. After that, you will see the diastolic phase. And in the diastolic phase, you will see the relaxation. This is actually the relaxation phase of the ventricle. And in that situation, pressure will become reduced. Then what will happen? This open, mitral valve open and the blood flow into the ventricle. Okay. Now, this is actually the diastolic phase. On the diastolic phase in which the pressure is reduced. But at some point, you will see there is an increase in the curve of the diastole. Now, in the diastole, you will see at the same time, this point, at the same time, you will see the atria also contract. So, in the ventricular diastolic scroll, there is a state 
and that state is the atrial systole that actually synchronize atrial systole with the uh, ventricular diastole so this is the case now this process has been completed this is actually the ventricular pressure curve okay now we will discuss our main topic that is the aortic aortic pressure curve so now this is the main point if you see uh, basically the pressure that is actually present in the aorta we will discuss it here we discuss previous that the pressure in the ventricle now we will discuss what pressure actually exists in the aorta when you see when you faces all three all four faces so if you see here first of all in the isovolemic contraction in the isovolemic contraction now there is no flowing of blood into the aorta in the isovolemic contraction in that situation the blood that is already present in the aorta is actually 180 so here is the situation the pressure that exists in the aorta is the 80 millimeter mercury now this is the case okay after that when the ventricle contract then after the contraction of the ventricle blood is start flowing into the aorta now this is the case in that situation you see this point at this point you will see the aorta aortic valve will become open this is the situation when the aortic valve become open okay when the aortic valve become open then what will happen blood rush into the aorta and in that situation you will see there is a lot of pressure in the aorta and what pressure 120 millimeter mercury will be the pressure in the aorta when the ventricle contract when the ventricle contract the blood that is present in the ventricle rush into the aorta and the pressure will be 120 millimeter mercury in that situation and it means it exceeds the ventricular pressure so in what will happen after that you will see it will start flowing and at the, some situation that the pressure is start decreasing because the blood that is actually present in the ventricle start decreasing so in that situation the pressure is start decreasing okay now in that situation you see before it's been now the aortic valve has to close before the diastolic state okay in that situation you will see that before the closure of the aortic valve some blood move backward because there is a lot of pressure as compared to the ventricle so if you see like uh, if i say that it, this one if i say like uh, this is the 85 millimeter mercury okay now the pressure in the aorta is higher than the ventricle so as you know that the substances or the fluid move from high pressure to the low pressure so it means that the some amount of the blood will start flowing back into the ventricle before the closure of the aortic valve so this is the case now in that situation you will see here this is the case and after that you will see after that you will see again the pressure starts increasing okay now you see there is a notch this is a notch and that notch is actually called the incisora this is the notch okay also you got the point before the closure of the aortic valve some amount of blood will start back moving back into the ventricle and when the aortic valve close now this is the point here at which the you will see the close of aortic valve and when the aortic valve close the pressure here uh, if i if there is a if some substance if some fluid is moving forward and if i suddenly block or stop then you will see the some amount of pressure will increase i am saying like if i say that this a blood if i say that this marker is a, is actually a blood when this marker 
is flowing rapidly. When I yes, suddenly stop this marker, then you will see the pressure will increase for, a, for some duration. So in that situation, if I suddenly block this marker, then you will see the pressure is somewhat increased. So this is the case at which the pressure will increase in the isovolumic relaxation. This is the case. Now, this blood actually from the aorta you will see the blood flowing into the peripheral circulation. Okay. And in the diastolic state, in the diastolic state, we know that the aortic valve is closed and mitral valve will become open. Keep remember, if one valve is open, then the other will be closed. So, if aortic valve is open, then the mitral valve will be closed. And if the mitral valve is closed, then the aortic valve will be open. Okay. Now, in the diastolic phase, in the diastolic phase, the aortic, the blood that is present in the aorta, pressure, pressure of the blood that is present in the aorta will start decreasing. And in that situation, it will decrease, but not at zero millimeter mercury. It will start decreasing. And if you see here, like at 80 degree. So it, be, it will become 80. So if you see that at the maximum level, you will see the pressure in the aorta is 120 millimeter mercury. Okay. And, and at the level of the diastole, you will see the pressure is 80 millimeter mercury. So that's why when we measure the when, when we measure the blood pressure, so you see that the maximum will be the 120 millimeter mercury. As we know that the blood flowing in this one and goes to the peripheral. So in that situation, maximum is 120 millimeter mercury, and the minimum will be 80 millimeter mercury. So that is the situation. Maximum is 120, and the minimum will be the 80 millimeter mercury. So this is actually the aortic pressure curve. So now we compare the ventricular pressure curve with the aortic pressure curve. So hope so you got the point. If you have any question then you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.